Hello, folks. My name is Eddie Craig. I am from Rule of Law Radio. You can listen to our show on LogosRadioNetwork.com on Monday nights from 8 to 10 p.m. Central Standard Time. I have been asked back to make a short presentation over the do's and don'ts of traffic stops as they exist here in Texas, but will generally apply across the nation. So please bear with me as I go through this. I'll try to keep it short and sweet and to the point. Now, for those of you that have gone to the LogosRadioNetwork.com forward slash TAO address and downloaded the script, you'll be able to follow along with this. If not, you can go there and get it. We're going to cover first the do's and don'ts. First, do remember that in Texas, an officer is required to read you your rights before questioning or searching you if they have placed you in a custodial arrest. Now, what they won't tell you and what the court has ruled here in Texas in the case of Aziz v. State in 2008 is that in Texas, in a transportation stop, you are always in a custodial arrest. No matter what the officer tells you about a lawful detention, you are in a custodial arrest. Now, that is why they are required before searching and retrieving information from you to advise you of your rights under 38.22 of the Code of Criminal Procedure. They never do this. The other part of it is you'd be waiving specific protected rights by giving them information, one of those being your right to remain silent. So please, when you go through this script, understand that there is a legal reason for everything it says to do or don't do. Now, be aware that they almost never read you your rights, and anything you incriminating you, uh, that you say, they can use against you because it will be considered to be a voluntary statement on your part. So please be careful about waiving that right and providing them with information. Now, don't ever answer the officer's questions like, where have you been, where are you going, how many drinks you had, what have you been doing, and so on and so forth. That's none of their business. It has nothing to do with their investigation. These are setup questions intended to escalate this at the very first opportunity to what every basic transportation stop is meant and trained to be escalated into, and that is a DUI or drug bust. This is where their money and their ability to prosecute truly lies, and that's what they want. And that is what helps them get their promotions and their federal funding is to make those type of busts. So you are being played when these types of questions are being asked. Don't fall for it. Now, in relation to that, you have that right to remain silent. By answering those questions, you are waiving that right. So let's not do that. The other thing you want to make sure you do is remember to roll up all of your windows and to lock your doors as you're getting pulled over, not after the fact when the officer's walking up to the car. You want to do it before you actually come to a stop. First, you roll your windows down just in case. Make sure the car's completely aired out. And then you roll everything up except for your window. And then when all those are up, roll your window up till it's about two to two and a half inches and no more. The officer has no lawful authority to force you to roll it all the way down. No law compels you to do that. Therefore, no law gives him lawful authority to demand that. He will accuse you of not following a lawful order. He may even attempt to charge you with that, but that charge is false and fictitious. There's no law requiring you to do it. Therefore, there is no law on which to base the presumption of it being a lawful order. Now, don't open your windows. Don't unlock your doors. Don't get out of your car. Just don't do it. This allows them to intimidate you in other ways that you will not be comfortable with and you don't want. So please, stay in your car, stay where it's safe, no matter what they tell you, because they don't have a lawful authority to order you out of your car in a transportation stop like they would if it was a DUI or a drug bust. And the whole purpose of this small portion of the window being open is to minimize their ability to make the accusations for either, as we will see. Now, that's why we don't ever roll down more than one window at a time. If an officer on the other side starts knocking on the window and telling somebody to roll it down, tell them not to do so. You don't want to create a cross draft inside that car that allows them to come up with the scenario of, I smell something because air was pushing through your car from the other open window. So just don't do it. 
Don't ever provide an officer with any documents or other information that they demand. And as you saw in the presentation I made last week on the interview with Jakari, the problem there is, is by production of those documents, one, it's a voluntary statement. Two, those documents, even unbeknownst to you, can potentially incriminate you in other ways and be used against you in a court of law to prosecute you. They cannot compel you to waive a protected right to exercise a privilege, nor can they statutorily create the requirement that you waive the right to comply with the statute. Those are forbidden, and there's lots of case law that says it's forbidden. So we're just not going to play their game with them in that and waive our rights just because they're demanding it. They will attempt to charge you for it, which, as I also covered, is in of itself a violation of your rights to criminalize the invocation and exercise of a protected right. Your right to remain silent covers both production of documents and verbal and written statements. You don't have to produce anything that they can use against you. And since you are not an attorney, you cannot make the presumption that what you're being uh, required to produce can't be used against you. You see how this works? Without that assistance of counsel, those decisions can't be made by you, shouldn't be made by you. So don't waive your right and produce. Even if you get assistance of counsel, make sure your counsel understands what rights they're trying to tell you it's okay to waive because that's what they're doing. Now, don't ever give your consent to an officer to search your car for any reason. No matter how kindly and nicely they ask, no matter whether or not you think you have anything to hide. As I said in the original presentation I did on this subject, you don't know what one of your, uh, the people that you had in your car before, friend, family, stranger, whatever, may have left behind in your car. You don't know unless you clean it on a regular basis, both underneath the carpet and everywhere else. You don't know what could be in that car that could be used against you. You don't know what that officer's intentions are. He could be short on his DUI bus or drug bus for the month. He could be planning paraphernalia while he's searching your car. Next thing you know, you've got a drug possession or paraphernalia charge to fight against. Don't consent to warrantless searches. Just don't do it. Now, <clears throat> officers will almost always insist that you are not under a custodial arrest, but rather are simply being detained or are part of an investigative detention. That's a lie, folks. Uh, I just did a write-up on a video from Rome, Texas, where two cops were harassing this lady and her son. Uh, I dissected that video minute by minute, and there, <laughs> both sides made their very big mistakes. The ones the officers made, however, are much worse simply because their mistakes resulted in a violation of rights, misrepresentation of the law, Basically, they're once again lying to members of the public to further their own ends. Folks, that's got to stop. We can't let them continue to get away with this. We just can't. So, when they tell you you're in a detention, you are not. In Texas, you are in a custodial arrest. In almost every state, you're going to be in a custodial arrest. You will need to research the statutes and the case law there to see if that determination holds true in your particular state, but here it does. That is where 3802 of the penal code comes in, where they attempt to threaten you with failure to identify because you won't produce a driver's license or something of that nature. As I covered in the presentation last week, failure to identify does not require physical production of any form of ID. It only requires production of three specific pieces of information, name, address, and date of birth. That's all. Do not go beyond that. Now, right here, you will see a basic breakdown, a graphic representation of the way the courts have ruled a determination of a custodial arrest is to be made. As you can see, custody is equal to custodial arrest or functional equivalent of a custodial arrest. Then we have functional equivalent of a custodial arrest is equal to a reasonable person considering the totality of the circumstances, who would believe that he or she is in police custody to such a degree associated with a formal arrest. In other words, officer, am I under arrest? No. Well, am I free to go? No. 
You cannot get the same answer to both of those questions. If you're not free to go, you're arrested, and you have the right to presume that is the case. Custodial detention, no such thing. It's a custodial arrest. Investigative detention, you're not allowed to leave. You can make the presumption that you are under custodial arrest, but until the officer actually tells you you are under arrest, you are actually under no legal obligation to comply with 38.22 of the Penal Code on failure to identify. You cannot provide false information to the officer under a detention or a custodial arrest, but you are not obligated under a detention to provide them with any information, even your name, address, and date of birth. All right, as you can see, once the interrogation begins about producing your information and your decision not to do so, all right, and why, all we do in this script, as I've said before, is to protect our rights. We don't get aggravated. We don't lose our temper. We don't shout. We don't attempt to educate the officer or school him on his job. We simply protect our rights. Invoke, demand, protect. That's the rule. Anything coming out of your mouth that isn't doing one of those three things is the wrong thing. Now, be certain to keep your face as far away from the window opening as possible while sitting normally in your car. Never speak directly into the officer's face or into the opening. Why? Because that gives them the opportunity to say they smell something on your breath like alcohol, even if they don't. Same thing dealing with the interior of your car. If they can stick their face halfway into your car, they can say, oh, I smell marijuana, get out of the car. Now, an officer's sense of smell is not admissible evidence in court but the courts have allowed them, despite the fact that they're running their job with a head cold today and couldn't possibly smell burning cabbage under it, the point being that they will make it up. So don't give them the opportunity. I have helped somebody while on the phone numerous times, and I have had officers pull this little stunt right here. The officer will say something resembling uh, sir or ma'am, I smell alcohol or marijuana, and I'm going to have to ask you to step out of your car. Don't fall for that. The moment those words come out of their mouth, and you need to be expecting them because, like I said, they are here to escalate this from a traffic stop to a DUI or drug bust, and this is one of their major tools for doing that. Even if they find nothing, they've still managed to search your car without a warrant, get you out of it, force you into a field sobriety test, and if you refuse, they're now going to attempt to punish you by administratively depriving you of a license, if you have one, and so on and so forth. This is all to compound the problems you're going to go through, not them. And if you let them do it, they will get away with it. So the moment the officer says something to that, or they ask you some question like, are you aware that you allegedly did something and I'm going to have to ask you to step out of the vehicle? Uh, rest assured, they're lying. And if they're not, well, then you didn't follow the other instructions I gave a few moments ago. When they say anything of that, you, of that nature, you specifically reply in this way, officer, and if you know their name and badge number, recite it. Your statement is patently false and an outright lie. Are you now trying to fabricate probable cause by making false statements into the record and false allegations against me? Now remember, they're recording this. You better be recording it too. And they're going to understand that you just caught them red-handed trying to make this escalation. That's going to be on their video. And if you manage to get this out articulately, they're not going to have any basis for saying you're under the influence because someone under the influence is going to trip all over this trying to make this statement. Now, if you are under the influence, not a lot I'm going to be able to do for you in that regard. Your best bet is to just shut up. And remember, that's the other three rules if you're not invoking, demanding, and protecting. Shut up, keep shutting up, and shut up some more. All right? So they can threaten you with canine units and all this stuff, but the problem is until they actually have probable cause to summon that canine unit, it's now a false imprisonment. It's gone from an unlawful detention to a straight-up false imprisonment because the courts have already said that they cannot hold you any longer than it takes to complete the actions for the original purpose of the stop. And they've given an approximate figure, though not an exact, 
of about 20 minutes to complete a standardized traffic stop. Now, of course, that is considering that the person complies in every way with everything they demand. Once you start standing up for your rights, the length of that stop is going to get extended considerably because the officer doesn't like it when you stand up for your rights. He doesn't want you standing up for your rights because that deprives him of his ability to complete the job and go generate revenue somewhere else or to go get another escalated case in progress so he can get his arrest up. So people, the script was written to protect you. Everything in it is based upon existing case law and the controlling case law on each and every aspect of what we do. You will see lots of people online knocking the script and saying, yeah, pull this in my state and you're going to get tased, or you're going to get shot. Folks, the way the cops are today, that's liable to happen over the fact that you rolled your window down in the first place. You just don't know. So why would you give up your rights just to feel a little safe? I believe Benjamin Franklin said that he who is willing to do that doesn't deserve to be safe or free. Okay, I'm paraphrasing it, of course, but you get the idea. If you're willing to give up your rights for safety and security, you will lose both and deserve neither, is what he said. So folks, please pay attention to these things in the script. They are written and designed to protect you. Thanks for listening, and I hope that this information is useful to you. We have had success from lots of people all across the U.S. with it, and some that not so much because they didn't practice it. But if you internalize this information and you get able to recite it as needed, it will serve you well. So thank you all for listening, and thanks for letting me be back.